Hey, it's James. Now, a few weeks ago, I reviewed this microphone here, which is the Shure MV7. It's their brand new USB microphone aimed at sort of podcast and broadcast applications. And it's meant to be modeled on the Shure SM7B, which is slightly more expensive, but is used by thousands of podcasters and broadcasters all over the world. And has really been a staple in most podcasting and radio studios for the last sort of 20 or 30 years. This is a great mic. Um, The reviews uh, uh, and the comments in the last review of this microphone, people were saying they still preferred the sound of this. So what I wanted to do today is actually compare the MV7 to another microphone in Shaw's lineup, which is the MV5. So yes, MV7, fantastic microphone, but what I wanted to do today is compare it to this one, which is the MV5. It's kind of plasticky, it looks a bit like a golf ball. This microphone I actually bought when I was at a conference one day. Uh, I was at South by Southwest a couple of years back. I didn't have a microphone with me, I'd forgotten to pack one, so I got this delivered on Amazon Prime now. To be honest with you, I've not really used it since, but I did notice when I was doing some tests recently that this little mic, although it's less than half the price of the MV7, the MV5, sounds really good. So I thought it'd be interesting to record a video today and compare the two. Now the intro of this video, we've been recording entirely on the MV7. No messing around on the app, it's just out the USB, straight onto Audacity. So now let's switch over to the MV5 and I'm going to show you the little uh, button it's got on the back which kind of ena- enables this sort of voice mode which I think sounds really good and I think it's easily going to sound just as good as the MV7 but it's half the price. So if kind of style and form factor doesn't really bother you, yes I know the MV7 looks like an SM7B but let's save ourselves $150 here. I think the MV5 retails around 100 bucks. I think it's just as good a microphone. So Let's get the USB switched over and we'll see how it sounds. All right, so I've now switched my audio source to the MV5. We've got this plugged in via the same USB cable. It's a clean swap. This is what the MV5 sounds like uh, without the special kind of voice mode engaged. Now, I will admit the MV5 is kind of plastic. It's a golf ball. As I said earlier, it doesn't have the same sort of form factor that we're seeing on the MV7. It's not kind of metal. It's not as rugged. And I guess, yes, the price reflects this. However, you can easily mount it on a microphone stand like I have now. So it's just as good if you want to be using it in a studio setting. It also comes with a kind of desk stand. I'll show you some uh, footage of this, but uh, you know, which I don't like. This is one of my pet hates with USB microphones is the fact that they have these desk stands that are actually like a few inches tall. And you kind of, to actually use it practically, you kind of have to be right down, you know, with your face practically on the table. Uh, that's not practical whilst you're recording, you know, sat at your computer. You really want something that's elevated to sort of your mouth level, which is why I like to use these microphone arms, of course. Now, what I want to do is enable the uh, voice mode, and I'll show you how amazing this makes my voice sound. And we'll just do a comparison to the, uh, the Shure SM, uh, MV7 again, sorry versus the MV5, which is 100 bucks versus 250 bucks. And I want to know what you think. Which one do you think actually sounds better? Do they sound around the same? Is it really worth spending $150 more just because it looks like the SM7B? And let's be honest, a lot of people are buying this because they can't stretch the SM7B in the first place. So let's plug it in and find out. All right, so now I've got the speech mode enabled. Um, Interestingly, looking at the waveform, you can kind of see that this is a lot more compressed than without the speech mode enabled but I do think it sounds really really impressive for such a cheap mic considering this thing is only a hundred dollars um this kind of gives your voice a real punch and it's specifically designed for spoken word for podcast applications you just click a button on the back you can choose instrument mode as well I don't play any instruments so I have no idea what I'm doing when it comes to that kind of stuff but I do think this actually sounds particularly impressive and sparkly uh, when compared to the MV7 at less than half the price tag. Let me know what you think in the comments below. We're going to just quickly go back on the MV7. I'll plug that one back in so you can get a direct comparison of this voice mode, which the MV7 does have kind of various options on the software, uh, but no buttons actually on the hardware itself to uh, enhance your voice like this. Okay, so we've now switched back to the MV7. No processing applied, straight out the mic via USB, the built-in USB interface. Um, I think you'll agree 
The MV5, when it has that voice mode enabled, has a real punch to it, which I just don't think this microphone can offer. Um, yet to play around with the actual software, I know there is a Motive software, Sure Motive software, which is what the MV stands for, uh, which you can download and tweak the actual sound of this. But, you know, if you're in a rush and you don't have time to mess, start messing around with those settings, I actually think the MV5 is perfect um, and it kind of sounds better. It's a little bit more portable, almost pocket sized. Yes, the build quality is not as nice. It's not like metal and it is a kind of plastic golf ball. It's kind of a weird thing, but I still think it looks pretty funky. Uh, but let me know what you think in the comments below. Is this worth the extra $150 or would you just go with the MV5 for 100 bucks, which I think is a pretty good deal. Let me know in the comments below. More videos like this one coming your way soon. See you later. Hey, I'm James, founder of Radio.co. Before you go anywhere, I've got an interesting question for you. Do you know the difference between a radio station that launches and becomes very successful, gets lots of listeners and does very well, and a radio station that perhaps kind of doesn't launch very well and disappears within a few months, doesn't really get much attention. Well, I've put together a checklist which will illustrate to you in a very simple way the five key differences between radio stations that launch do well versus radio stations that launch and kind of disappear. You can download your free copy over at radio.co slash checklist today. To find out exactly how you can make the most out of your radio station. That's radio.co slash checklist. Go and grab your free copy. I'll see you there.